Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and welcome once again to another edition of Sound Off Louisiana. Many of you may recall we just endorsed Keith Bodan for House District 46 and it's my pleasure to make our second endorsement today and that would be none other than Mr. Bob Bell who is standing right over here to my right. He is a candidate for the Senate District 16 and that would be a district that is near and dear to my heart because it happens to be the district in which I reside. So I'm going to step aside for just a moment and let Bob Bell give you a little overview of why he'd like to be your next senator from District 16. Bob, take it away. Well, we have so many ills of the financial nature here. We have a gas tax, a state gas tax that's not being spent on roads and bridges. And then they come back wanting to increase the tax when they haven't properly applied the existing taxes. So I am opposed to raising taxes. The legislature currently and previous legislatures seem to have an addiction for tax increases. Whatever comes up, their answer is increase taxes. They wait until the last minute so that raising taxes appears to be the only option instead of working and doing the job to reorganize and reform state government and make sure that the existing revenues are applied properly to get results. Now, I could take a lot more time than I have today to explain to you all the things that are wrong with the current system. Number one, it's not a system, but it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, and then at the end of the day, there's been so much confusion and manipulation, it's hard to tell where the money went and what happened to it. So I am running on my message, which is to reduce regulations, reduce taxes, reduce spending, and reduce intrusion of state government into people's private lives. There are some things that I would like more time to talk about, like repealing the annual mandatory automobile inspections. Texas doesn't have that. Florida doesn't have that. They get along fine without it. So we are an over-regulated state, and we have an all-powerful state government that sets itself up and runs itself for the benefit of the government and the people involved in the government, and just leaves the people, we the people, way behind. So I would earnestly ask for your vote and support. There's no free ride to get this seat into hands where it will be handled properly. We all have to work for that, not just the candidates. So I hope you will come forward and help me in this race. Thank you very much. Well, well thank you so much. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, this is also a dedicated veteran who has served his country. I meant to say that when I had the opening introduction of him. But let me just shift for a moment to talk about the opposition. As many of you know, this was a website designed for challengers to incumbents who had voted in favor of the sales tax measures that went in the 2018 various stages of the legislature, be it special session one, two, three, or uh, the regular session. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you, this, this is an open seat. Senate District 16 is an open seat. However, this gentleman has the distinction of running against not one, but two incumbents because the two opponents that he will have are Representative Steve Carter, who currently is my representative, and also Representative Franklin Foyle. Those will be his two major competitors. I am here to tell you, and we're going to supply you the links, we always do, so that you can substantiate these votes. Both of these two gentlemen voted all five times in favor of the sales tax. They voted in favor of it in February the 28th. They voted in favor of it on March the 4th. They voted in favor of it on May the 25th. They voted in favor of it on May the 28th. And they voted in favor of the final tax that passed in June 22nd, which happened to be the highest of all five, 0.45%. Uh, so these two gentlemen's record is very clear. Uh, they, they voted for the tax knowing that, hey, I have made no secret from the formation of this site that we intended to, to, to utilize that, those measures to assist uh, uh, challengers to the, to the incumbents. And uh, let me just say this, with regard to Representative Carter especially, uh, because as I said, he's been my representative uh, for the last 12 years. And uh, prior to the 2018 uh, sessions, Representative Carter, many of you may recall, actively sponsored legislation for a pretty massive increase in the Louisiana uh, 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 gasoline tax. It was about 18 cents a gallon, if I recall correctly. I mean, it started out at 23. I mean, it was high. Let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, 
There was some pretty fierce opposition to that tax. Chief among it, among it was a group of uh, volunteers from Americans for Prosperity, uh, and Representative Carter didn't take that opposition very well. In fact, he had some very choice words for those of us with Americans for Prosperity who had gone out, gone door to door, and had been very effective in, in, in cornering opposition to that tax, so much so that he never even brought it up for a, a vote on the floor because he, did, he knew he didn't have the votes. But let's break away. It won't even last for two minutes, but I want you to hear Representative Carter and just how angry he could get when he didn't get his way on the gas tax. Let's break away. This nonsense has hurt the people of the Baton Rouge area and has hurt the state. As you can tell, I'm frustrated. My frustration has also been seeing my party influenced by out of touch, out of state, bankroll group, the Americans for Prosperity, who care less for the everyday problems of Louisiana citizens than they do for spreading ideological based lies about a solution that can help the people of Louisiana. Well, now this group can at least claim they scared Louisiana away from doing the right thing. So here's my message back to the Republicans at the party uh, across the state. We cannot become the party of the so-called Americans for Prosperity. All righty, folks, you just heard it. You just heard it. That was Representative Steve Carter and having him having choice words for those who chose not to agree with him as he said doing the right thing. I will say this, during the 12 years that I have had Representative Carter as my representative, I've sent maybe four letters. It's not like I've flooded him with letters. Uh, we're going to supply you a direct link to one of them. Uh, and I, you would, would you like to know how many times I've heard back from Representative Carter out of those four? Zero. Okay. Zero. Which to me means I must not be very important. I have to wonder how many others uh, fit that same category. But you're going to see an itemized list. Because he made a challenge at the press club. He said, if there's all this waste in government, I'd like to see it. You'll see in the correspondence, I said, in my itemized him $40 million in very specific areas. And I said, I would submit this is highly questionable expenditures. So that's $40 million, and that's just a sampling. I never heard back from him, folks. So we now have an alternative. We have an alternative who is committed to not increasing your taxes. He would not have voted for all those sales tax measures. So it's my distinct honor and privilege to endorse Bob Bell for State Senate District 16. And with that, I'll let him say a few concluding words, and we'll consider this a wrap. Thank you so much for being our guest today, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Well, other states have uh, lower taxes than us, and they get much better results from government. So that's what I will be working on, is for you to get your money's worth from the taxes that you pay without raising any taxes and hopefully even reducing taxes. We are an over-regulated state and regulations cost money. The compliance with regulations, so we will, get, we will work to get rid of regulations and save the taxpayers some money. Not just uh, stop raising taxes, but make better use of the money we have and save expenses and time for the taxpayers. Thank you very much.